In this video we're going to go on a walk around the picturesque town of Ponta Delgada, inside and out. Meet an Australian migrant, Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. take in the view from the battlements while spending almost nothing. Keep scared of skin blended and, and a parvenu. First thing that you can say around here is there's not a lot of room in some of these streets if you're driving. Uh, I've driven along here and it was pretty tight. Uh, I've parked actually away from the hotel. I'll show you where because it's free a bit later on. Uh, but at the moment, let's have a look around. So here's the plan. We'll go through the historic part of town, along the harbour front, into the fort. Then, via an intriguing blue building, past free parking, to some tropical gardens. Also, if you look at the bottom left of the screen, you can see how close to the airport we are, which we'll return to later in the video. You have to love the streets themselves, with all the black and white cobbling. Founded in the early 1500s by Portuguese settlers, Ponta Delgada quickly became a stopover for ships crossing the Atlantic. As you can see, there were lots of decorations up. That's because I was in the town a couple of weeks before Christmas. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! Let's head inside the main church in town for a quick look. As you'll see on this tour, many buildings reflect Portugal's colonial architecture, with whitewashed walls contrasting with black volcanic rock. That volcanic rock basalt is readily available on this island. Built in the 18th century, this gate served as the main entrance to the city from the harbour. Construction on this town hall began in the 17th century. The statue in front of it is of the Archangel St Michael. Not a bad name if you ask me. It's all about you. The walk to the harbour is no more than a minute or two from the church. distances you have to walk between each location is not very far. It's also worth saying that the weather is very typical of this time of year. Certainly judging on the week I've been here, it's glorious sunshine, no rain predicted, and yet about 10 minutes ago it had a little go, it tried to rain as well. It's also worth saying you're not that far from the airport here, it's uh, only about 10 minutes drive from the centre of the town. And as if to prove my point as to how close to an airport we are. And if you want to see what it's like to fly on one of those aircraft, there are other videos on this channel of my flight to and from the island of Pico. Work on this fort began in the mid 1500s. It was used to defend the area from frequent attacks from pirates. Well, like a moth to a flame, of course I'm drawn to going into any sort of castle or fort. Nowadays, the fort is used as a base for the Portuguese Navy. It's also, as you're about to see, the home for a museum that showcases the military history of the area. It costs for an adult just four euros to get into the museum. However, when I was there, you couldn't pay contactless or with a card. It was cash only. When I was in the museum, I was left to my own devices. There was no one around to check on me or see what I was doing. I'm pretty sure I'm the only person here, but I feel like I have to whisper in a museum but uh, it's uh, very small but nicely maintained. And I tell you what, you can smell fresh paint. Uh, it's obviously a lot of work going into maintaining it. 
In terms of time, you probably won't need to spend more than an hour or so in the museum. If this video is proving helpful to you planning a similar trip to the Azores, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit a like on the video to help me grow the channel and help more travellers. After the museum, it was time to go up to the top of the fort and take in the view of the harbour and Ponta Delgada. I think we can do better than that view. I think it's fair to say that a lookout from this position could see trouble from a long way off. That is the fort done. We're now going to head in the direction behind me back into town. In truth, this was something I hadn't expected. A war memorial next to the fort. So this is a little square just across from the castle. I'll put the name of it on the screen. You may have seen also over there, uh, it's going about its job, uh, booking somebody probably for uh, not paying for their parking. A little bit later on in the video, I will show you somewhere where, uh, very close to town, you can actually park, and at the moment, certainly at the time of filming, it's completely free. This statue is dedicated to those who left the Azores for a better life in the Americas. This is the convent of Our Lady of Hope and is most famous for being the sanctuary of the Lord of Holy Christ of the Miracles. A five minute walk brings us to this striking blue building which houses the regional authority that governs the Azores. As we head towards free parking, why not hit the subscribe button for this channel because next up I'll take you through the journey home from here, the highs and passive aggressive lows and then after that I'll take you through the pros and cons of coming to the Azores in off season. If you want to use this car park while in Ponta Delgada, you'll find the exact location in the description to this video. I don't think you see many parks these days where you have chickens following you around. They clearly thought I had some food with me. What you need to understand about me is I have a touch of ornithophobia and as a result something like this was a little bit of a test. I haven't got anything against the bird. The gardens were beautifully maintained and were free to get into. Speaking of which, how much did this walking tour cost me? Well, just the cost of getting into the museum. With this tree from Australia in the middle of Ponta Delgada in San Miguel, I'll finish this video now. Uh, there are plenty more videos from my time in the Azores available on a playlist, the link to which is on the screen now.